Breaking news, scandal and controversy rock fertility giant embryonics. Nearly nine months to the day, thousands of parents are stunned by what some are calling a birth defect. What would you do if you wanted to have a baby and your baby was born with different attributes than what you pre-selected? Just moments ago, 18-year-old technology whiz kid, Dr. Tierra Beasley, was brought in by federal agents for questioning. If you can confess, that'd be perfect. And Dr. Beasley, I want you to understand that me and Detective Stone are prepared to be here all night. Look, young lady, we're not going to do this song and dance with you much longer. So now we're singing and dancing. From the impression I was under, this was a stand-up comedy routine posing as a police interrogation. I'm sick of I ain't gonna put up with this no more. Please, let's just give Dr. Beasley a chance to tell her side of the story, man. So Dr. Beasley, would you like to take this from the top? Where I fiercely research every detail of the titanic piercing voices of the great Castratas and analyze the disturbing parallels to the testosterone lab in the That's it. Well, my good doctor, this certainly doesn't look like the resume of someone who's trying to introduce chaos into a world of anarchy. Would you like to share with me while we're here? Oh, sad face, Dr. Spencer. A very, very sad face. You started the question with what I'd like to. You may want to consult with Pinking the Brain out there about what I would like. The unnecessary, precursory, and overutilized qualifier of what I'd like to elicits from me a response solely directed to what might be my preference at this moment. Duly noted. So I guess you're trying to tell me. You need to ask better questions. I'll keep that in mind. So here's a question. Did you use your access or your influence or any of your power in your shaping of nanosphere to affect the racial outcomes of embryonics? Bravo, Dr. Spencer, but still not a question a preeminent psychologist like yourself is really here for. So what am I here for? From my vantage point, Dr. Edmund V. Spencer is not here to find out if I did this crime. Dr. Edmund V. Spencer is not even here to find out how I did this crime. Dr. Edmund V. Spencer is here for a singular purpose, and that is to deduce why I did this crime. Okay, I'll bite. So why would Dr. Tierra Beasley jeopardize a promising future, a stellar career, a historic resume by committing this type of crime? Um, spectacular, Dr. Spencer. I think this is the part where you might want to turn your tape recorder on. <coughs> Dr. Spencer, are you still with us? Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No, don't mind me. I, can, can, can I ask you a question? Have we met before? Only in the research journals. So, Dr. Spencer, can I ask you a question? I wouldn't have it any other way. What do you think the number one criteria was that these patients were choosing? It's not cute, that's easy. Wrong. Eliminating all other variants. 83% of selectants chose this particular attribute to be the one they deemed most desirable for their child. Then it has to be IQ. Nope. It's not IQ or income. It's not height. It's not weight. It's not mental illness or medical history. Surprisingly, it's not even blood type. The reason why you're here, my good doctor, it's race. Well, so in discovering that it's race, assuming that your postulate is correct, we have motive now. You, in an attempt to play God in this process, decided to affect the outcomes of race by tampering using nanosphere. Everyone, 
and I do mean everyone in this process was playing God except for me. The sperm banks, the donors, the physicians, the couples, embryonics, blah, of course. Blah, 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 blah. And Dr. Tierra Beasley didn't play God in the process as well? No. I observed their self-proclaimed deity, and just like God, I let the chips fall where they may. Motive again. So, you decided to knock the demigods, or the self-proclaimed deities, back down to earth. Actually, my crime is one of notoriety. You see, as you know from your previous works, the higher profile the crime, the higher profile the criminal. I am guilty of being the easiest, culpable, Oswaldian target, so that if I am sacrificed, all these gods will be happy. So if you're sacrificed, you admit that you're guilty of something. <sighs> That's just something we'll have to find out at trial. You're saying we're going to trial? Yep. Three, two, one. That is enough, Tiara! Dr. Spencer, may I see you outside for a moment, please? Right now, you're sifting through papers, reviewing notes, and reading headlines stating that the legendary forensics career of Dr. Edmund V. Spencer is virtually finished for his failures in this, his most prominent case. A shocking turn of events in the embryonics race tampering case. Just moments ago, Dr. Tierra Beasley acquitted of all charges. I had hoped you would have figured this out by now, but obviously, you did not. Now you're questioning the witty repertoire, the cat and mouse, and why I remind you of someone. Well, let me tell you who that reminiscent someone is. My birth name wasn't Tierra Beasley. My birth name, Tierra Snowden. But with all the attention I was receiving by my first birthday, my mother decided to change my name for protection. Her name, Diane Snowden. I think this is the part where your mouth is slightly open, the flashbacks are happening, and you have a painfully surprised look on your face. I am the child. From your adulterous affair with my mother 19 years ago. I am the child. I am the child she never told you or anyone about to protect your stellar reputation. I am the child who watched your star shine in the oxymoronic field of unreconciled paternal anger. I am the child. Who thought this little exercise in humility would be an excellent opportunity for you to see, touch, and smell the wrath of a child of a sociopath. I am your child, the child that will never call you daddy.